Welcome to lesson one on interactions and interdependence. Before you start on this lesson, you need to make sure you have everything you need. You will need a copy of the booklet either printed off or on your computer. If you are not working on computer, you will also need something to write with. You will need some post-it notes or you can just cut up some paper. And you will need some colour pencils. If you don't have any, don't worry. So let's get started with SC1, which is to define a habitat and give some examples. Start by reading through the three statements in the table and deciding which one you think is the definition of a habitat. Tick the one you think is correct. The correct answer is that a habitat is a part of the environment that can provide food, shelter and a breeding site. Now that we know what a habitat is, we're going to try and think of some examples of habitats. You will have the next minute to think of as many examples as you can. You will need to write these examples onto your post-it note. Okay, your minute starts now. Okay, that's time up, guys. So obviously I can't go through every single example of a habitat, but on the screen are a few that I thought of. So I came up with desert, shoreline, sea, ocean, beach, forest, rainforest, grasslands, tundra, mountains, lake, pond. You can also have micro habitats like trees or under a log, for example. So give yourself a mark out of five. If you got five examples of habitats, you can have five marks. If you got four, you would have four and so on. Let's move on to SC2, which is to be able to draw food chains. Okay, so if you click on the link in SC2, you will find there is a video which comes up which is all about food chains. You're going to watch um, the first section of the video which is up to 3 minutes 57. Um, and as you watch it, you need to answer the questions that accompany it. So there are nine, I think, questions in your booklet and you need to answer those as you watch this video. Okay, if you pause on this picture and then you can mark your answers. You don't have to have the exact same wording as me, but you do have to have the kind of the main point of the answer. I've tried to keep my answers nice and brief so it's obvious what the answer is. On to the next task of SC2 then, which is to create your own examples of food chains. Read the instructions carefully and look carefully at the example food chain given before you start this task. 
you should spend roughly 20 to 30 minutes drawing food chains. They should be drawn in these boxes here and make sure that you have all of the labels requested. In week one in Shobi, you'll see a section called food chains or an assignment called food chains. That's where I would like you to now upload your food chains that you have drawn. So can you please upload them into that section on Shobi? On to SC3, where we're going to look at how to predict the effect of changing one element of a food chain. Read through and answer question number one. I would highly recommend using bullet points. So let's go through the answer to question one altogether. What will happen if most of the rabbits die from a disease? Explain your answer. Well, let's think about how less rabbits will affect the other two things in the food chain. So first of all, the foxes eat the rabbits. So how are they going to be affected? And the grass is eaten by the rabbits. So how is that going to be affected? Now let's put it into writing. So the fox population will decrease because there are less rabbits or prey for them to eat. The grass population will increase because there are less rabbits eating the grass. So in this answer, the key words are in yellow. So we want to say that there's a decrease in the fox population because there are less rabbits. And we want to highlight the increase in the grass population because there are less rabbits. So the words highlighted are the words you need to give yourself a mark for. So you might now want to pause on here so that you can read through these answers really carefully and think carefully about the structure, about keywords, about how simple and clear this answer is, and then apply all of those things to your next answers. So you should now be able to have a really good go at question two and three, remembering to use the key words you learned in the last question. So I'd recommend now pausing on either of the next two pictures so that you can mark your last two answers. And remember that if you don't have the key words which are in yellow, then you can't get the mark unless you used a slightly different word, but with the same meaning, of course. Well done, you've completed lesson one on interactions and interdependence. Watch out for lesson two.